Welcome to Mikun's Hardware. In this video I have got my hands on yet another Chinese LG2011 version 3 socket motherboard. This motherboard looks very familiar to yet another Chinese motherboard for LG2011 first version uh, socket, which was called uh, Plex HD X79 Turbo. This motherboard is arguably one of the best Chinese motherboards for the socket LG2011. Thus, I have my hopes for this one, which doesn't really have a name, but we call it, or rather, I call it Plex HD X99 Turbo. Let's take a look what is similar and what's different between these two motherboards. So, compare with the previous version, we have lost one of the PCI Express slots, but we have gained one PCI Express X1 slot. We have uh, uh, got two extra USB 3 ports, but lost two USB 2 ports, which is a good thing, I guess. Uh, then, of course, this motherboard is working with the DDR4, while the old one is working with the DDR3 RAM. The power pins location has also been changed. For some reason, the 8-pin CPU power has migrated from this very convenient location to this one, which is not very convenient. Another change I can spot is the location of their 4-pin fan connector for the CPU. On X79 it's here, on X99 it's over here. This is not very convenient because this cord is going on top of the RAM sticks and if you have high RAM sticks over here, uh, it might interfere a little bit. But that's not a big of a deal, you can always bypass it over the side or something like that. The PCI Express and VME connector is exactly the same on both motherboards, shall work. Now we also have USB 3 on the front panel, USB 3 here, a couple of USB 2 on the front panel. These extra 6-pin power connectors, I have no idea what it is made for. I tried with and without, I was hoping to achieve higher CPU clock speeds with extra power, but unfortunately it doesn't help. Maybe this is extra power for the PCI Express uh, slots for the graphics cards which do not receive uh, extra power. I have no idea. All the graphics cards I tested here, they worked with and without this extra 6-pin power connector. On the other side, we see that all the SATA ports from the X79 board is replaced with the SATA 3 ports on X99 boards. On X79, uh, we had just one SATA port, even though those two are green, only one of them is SATA 3, the other one is SATA 2. The one on the bottom is SATA 3, the one on the top is SATA 2. And those two are obviously SATA 2 as well. On X99, all eight of them are SATA 3. Those capacitors, I'm not sure if it's good or bad, but I see they are different here. I leave this alone, I don't know if it's good or bad. Let's, do, let's take a look at the VRAM. So on X79, we had a seven phase VRAM, or at least I think so. Like I can see uh, seven phases here. I don't want to remove the radiators right now because I do not have the thermal pads to reply it back if I manage to destroy the old uh, or the previous thermal pads. Uh, on this motherboard though, I can see only five uh, VRM phases, which is arguably worse, but I'm not an expert in these kind of things, so I will leave it alone. What I can see is that we have seven pieces of components here and only five here. So theoretically, X79 has a better VRM performance and better power delivery to the processor compared to the X99 version. So that's basically all I can say about these motherboards without actually testing them. They look very much alike, uh, different socket, different RAM support, some differences, but uh, some similarities as well. Let's go to the deep testing and find out if this motherboard is actually worth it, as the old one, X79, is actually one of the best Chinese LJ2011 boards. Okay, let's start with the detailed specification of the Plex HD X99 Turbo motherboard. It supports Intel LJ2011 version 3 socket CPUs, Intel Core i7s and Intel Xeon processors. 
It has support for quad-channel DDR4 memory, supporting regular desktop RAM sticks, as well as ECC and ECC registered server RAM. It has four USB 3 ports, four USB 2 ports, eight SATA 3 ports, no SATA 2 ports, two four pin uh, fan headers for the CPU fan and system fan, two PCI Express X16 slots, three PCI Express X1 slots, one PCI Express NVMe X4 slot for SSD drives, one 5.1 audio network port, and two PS2 ports. Let's go through the test results. I have tested the motherboard with Intel Core i7-6800K and it works. I have also tested different RAM combinations. I have got 2 sticks of 8 gigs, 4 sticks of 8 gigs and 4 sticks of 16 gigs. Everything worked, so the maximum RAM I have tested on this motherboard was 64 gigs. USB 3 ports is yet another disappointment. All ports work, but if I am starting a crystal disk mark test with my Samsung T5 external SSD, then the system first hands and then after a while crashes. This means there is something wrong with the USB 3 controller on these Chinese motherboards because the previous motherboard, Runin X99, was also having exactly the same issue and this one is repeating the behavior. USB 2 ports are all working fine. SATA 3 ports are also working fine. Fan headers working OK and there is automatic regulation of the CPU fan speed. PCI Express slots working as well, both of them are X16 speed. I have plugged uh, my graphics card into both of the slots and both of them were working at full X16 speed. NVMe slot works with no problem. Windows sleep mode does not exist. It's not possible to enable sleep mode in BIOS and this Windows is not allowing to enable sleep mode in the Windows settings or turn computer into the sleep mode. Linux is supported, working no problem, and it's possible to boot from NVMe drive, so this work. Unfortunately, Turbo Boost is not working either. My Core i7-6800K, which is specified to Turbo Boost to 3.6 GHz with a 3.4 base, was working on something like 3.3 to 3.5 GHz, which results in a very underwhelming performance. The same as on Runin X99, CPU overclocking does not work. As soon as I turn on the feature in the BIOS, motherboard really refuses to uh, boot and I have to turn it off, take the battery out, wait for a little while until the BIOS flushes and turn it back on to the default BIOS settings. Much to my surprise, this motherboard actually let me pick different RAM speed, but maximum I was able to achieve was uh, DDR4 2600 mega transfers. This is not the best possible result, but at least this is something. Unfortunately, the RAM timings are not available to configure, thus the timings are quite loose. VRM thermal performance is unknown because I didn't uh, have an option to test it. I don't have a thermometer and the motherboard dies on the load, so I can't really check it. Motherboard temperature and voltage sensors do not work, the same as on the Runin X99 board. Here is a comparison of the Geekbench 5 result, which was performed on Linux, and I compare it to this Plex HD X99 Turbo motherboard with a result which was taken on an MSI motherboard. And we can see that MSI motherboards score significantly higher result which shows that Turbo Boost and frequency management on this motherboard is working extremely poor. Here is the result of the Prime 95 test. First, we see that after a while, two cores or one core, one thread, for some reason, stop to be utilized for 100%. This does not happen from the very beginning. It happens after some time. I have no idea what's the reason of this, but this is a repetitive behavior. What's even worse is that the motherboard dies after 20 or so minutes of stress test. I was monitoring and checking the temperatures of the processor, of the VRAM, of all other components, 
and everything is normal, but the motherboard, it dies. Sometimes it's in 10 minutes, sometimes it's in 20 minutes, sometimes in, in the 30 minutes range, but it still dies. What we can also see that HW monitor and CPU Z are reporting different voltages, while HW monitor is reporting 1.7 volts for the CPU, which is extremely high. CPU Z that is reporting 1 volts, which is, I guess, okay. Anyway, the temperature sensors and the voltage sensors on this motherboard are screwed up, so they are not working. Okay, so what's the conclusion for this motherboard? Unfortunately, I have to say that you have to avoid this motherboard as much as possible. It simply does not work, it does not worth it, and if you are looking to build a cheap system, then X99 is unfortunately not yet the platform for you. You can take a look at the AMD AM4 platform and Intel LJ2011 first version. Those two platforms are very nice and very budget-friendly options are available with very good performance. For this motherboard, we have to conclude that it's over, it's not working, and I will have to switch to test some other motherboards which are available on the market. If you're interested, you can take a look at the Geekbench 5 result and user benchmark result which were taken on this motherboard, following the links provided in the video description. Regarding the alternatives, I still have to test one on GX99M. Unfortunately, this motherboard has stuck somewhere in the customs office, but I'm waiting for it to arrive. As soon as it arrives on my hands, I will perform detailed testing and report on my channel how it stacks uh, against branded motherboards and against other Chinese motherboards. Yet another alternative is Huanan GX99TF, which looks very nice and promises a lot of features, but unfortunately it's currently being sold for more than 100 US dollars, which makes it very hard to justify its price and to be able to recommend it to anyone who is looking for a budget build. That's it for today. Thanks for listening, thanks for watching, and goodbye!